Welcome to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we're better together than separated. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for tuning in um, to this edition. We have Does the Music Matter 13, Mr. Corey Pritchard with us again today. What up, though? You know, how you doing, man? All is well, bro. All right, man. You know, we wanted to bring Corey back in, man, and just talk to him and, uh, you know, be able to, for him to explain, you know, the power that we possess to resist against the negative influences in life, in the music, and just in our culture, period. You know, a lot of people don't understand the power that they possess because they don't understand the the capacity of their mind. Right. You know, once we start to understand the capacity of our thought process, once we understand, mm -hmm. you know, how to switch the thoughts when we have negative thoughts, from switching it from a negative to a positive thought. Mm -hmm. You know, just having that control over your own thoughts as to where you're not influenced by outside circumstances that dictate your actions. Right. You know, so Word. let's talk a little bit about that, man. Word, you word, know? man. You know, and uh, thanks again, man, for having me back. No bro. doubt, man. No thanks doubt, again, man. man. Um, that's an interesting piece, man, especially when connecting that to music. And it's like the mind work like this, just, you know, just being somebody who is, I'm not an expert, I'm the experienced. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I always like to say that. But having a psychology background and mm -hmm. a therapist background and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, I understand the mind, you know, and I've studied the mind. And so it's like, like you said, when it comes to the mind, uh, we have more power sometimes than we know. Mm -hmm. But I just want to break down a simple piece, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about memory. Mm -hmm. um, memory is probably one of the most powerful aspects of the mind. Right. You know, and it's right. because of memory, you literally find yourself driving down the street, mm -hmm. going from point A to point B, where you go on a consistent basis, without really using a lot of mind power. Mm -hmm. Your subconscious kicking in because a memory, right? Mm -hmm. That's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You you literally, and let's be real, some of us be distracted by a cell phone and everywhere. Right. But you still <laughs> get there. You turn, you hit your blinker at right. a certain stop sign. You go the certain same way without mm -hmm. even really thinking. That's powerful. That's because of your memory. Mm -hmm. So connect that to something like music, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that is so powerful. And then, you know, if something negative is constantly being input into my memory, right. then it's going to have a negative input. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you just kind of got to understand, too, how the mind works. The memory, you got short-term memory, then you got long-term memory, mm -hmm. right? But you got working memory as well, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of times, um, we don't understand this on average, but mm -hmm. just, just sharing it, you know, trying to keep it simple. Um, it's like information will come. And when it comes to music, we do practice and uh, we, we do elaborative rehearsal and maintenance rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And when we're practicing these two things, when it comes to memory, that's how things kind of transfer from short term working memory on to over to long term memory. Mm -hmm. You know, um, elaborative rehearsal uh, is repeating something mm -hmm. over and over again. You know, and just like maintenance rehearsal, it's the same. Some like you know uh, the ABCs, mm -hmm. right? A B C D E F G. You know how that's put like in a song, right? Right. That's like elaborative rehearsal. Okay. You know, and and when you do that for a child, you've seen that. I mean, some of us still use it to this day. Right. You trying to spell something, you be uh, elemental P. Okay. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Come on, let's be let's be you real. Still singing it in the song. You still singing the song. Right. You know what I mean? But that's how powerful the mind is in memory. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so when you connect that, I mean, um, I still remember songs and music uh, from when I was a young a young child. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who sang. Mom and them, you know, sitting up there playing that old school. Yeah. You know, creeping in the next room. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know that whole song, but I don't even know who sang. It might be Johnny Taylor. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You, but you understand what I'm saying. Right. And so that's, you know, if it works like that with something like creeping in the next mm -hmm. room. Guarantee it works with something like that with gangster rap music mm -hmm. and everything like that too. But it's right. not always a negative thing, what I'm trying right. to explain right now. What I'm explaining right now is just the power of the mind and memory just as a whole. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? 
So when did you come to the terms where you started to understand the capacity of your thought process? You started to understand the power that you possessed in your head. When when I began to try to change it and I find myself, or when I had a desire to change things in my life, just with me, and I couldn't, mm -hmm. that's when. Mm -hmm. Like, the desire was there. Mm -hmm. But you just didn't have the... the I, it wasn't thing. happening. Right. It wasn't manifesting. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? It literally wasn't that. Like, it was like waking up, uh, you know, trying to change a behavior that I've had for so long, I didn't realize I had to, it was, it was, I had to deal with my mind. Yeah. You know, I was trying to do it just straight off of my desire. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And once you got those habits that's built up and that's, that's tethered to that central nervous system stimulant. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you constantly just stick to this one thing, one thing, one thing, and then it's like your mind is on automatic. So when you get to the point where you want to change the thought capacity of your mind, is you have to work twice as hard as when you put the habit up, up in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, to get rid of it, you have to work twice as hard to get rid of a habit than when you developed it. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. You got to put forth more effort. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and a lot of times people yeah. don't want to change like negative habits and, 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 and things of that nature because when you, you're doing it for so long, it just feel good to you. Your body is right. automatic. Yeah. You know, it don't take a lot of work. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because you basically on autopilot. You're on autopilot. You're you on know? Autopilot. Yeah. But to, once you realize the, 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 the faculty of your mind, you, you realize the capacity of your mind, you realize the power that you possess in there, you know, that's when you want to start making those changes because your mind is the greatest asset. Absolutely. You know, your mind is the greatest asset. Whatever the mind can conceive, it can achieve. Absolutely. You know, I remember um, when I was dealing with my brain, you know what I'm saying? And getting to know myself and understanding the capacity of my own mental uh, gravity in life. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to, I had to change up a lot of the negative thoughts that was going on in my mind. A lot of mm -hmm. dark thoughts, a lot of negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. So I had to teach myself how to control my thoughts, how to have more control over my brain. Absolutely. So when like a negative thought came in there, I would switch the channel of it Absolutely. to a good thought. When a bad thought popped in my head, I would switch the channel yeah. to a, a more festive, a more fun thought. Yeah. So that's how I started to start playing, started teaching myself how to control the thoughts of my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that what I'm saying? That took intentionality too. You had yeah. to be intentional with that. Yeah, I, had, I had definitely had to be intentional. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. because I, you know, it can um, be exhausting too. Of course, it can. Can it? it, it, it when you it, really trying to, when you being intentional about that, when you become aware of that, and you got that insight, and yeah. now you're trying to apply that, mm -hmm. that can be exhausting. And right to the point where a lot of people don't want to do it, and that's yeah, what I was talking quit. about. Is just that you know a lot of people rather stick to the habits that they've had for the last twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. because it's hard to change. It's hard to, to, to walk in a different different it, it, life. It is. It is. And then in, in addition to it being challenging, I like to say it's challenging, right? Um, instead of it being hard. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, but in addition to it being challenging, it's like, but it's like anything else. Getting a degree, getting a trade. Right. Right. Anything that's worth having is right. what? Challenging. challenging. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I tell them, uh, you got to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't want to be uncomfortable no. doing anything. No. Everybody no. want to be comfortable Absolutely. doing things. Absolutely. And to, and to understand the capacity and the power that you possess in your brain, you have to be comfortable with the things that make you uncomfortable. I know what you're saying. You know. I know what you're saying. You know, and the more you deal with things that make you uncomfortable, the more you are able to deal with certain challenges that as come they arise. As Absolutely. they arise. Absolutely. Because they coming. 
Cause they yeah they come right <laughs> right they coming. you know absolutely and, 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 and we don't like to be put in uncomfortable situations those are the, like the worst the worst things the worst challenges for us but what it does it builds our brain capacity up to be able to accept difficulties and accept challenges yeah. down the line yeah it's about that re it, it helps us with that response power mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's like the way we respond to situations, circumstances, and conditions in life is really where we're going. That's where it's all about. That's mm -hmm. where everything is at. My, where I res how I respond and everything that happened. You, mm -hmm. you know, because life is full of trials and tribulations. Life is full of things you can't control. Mm -hmm. it's, you're around people that you can't. I mean, you can't control people, mm -hmm. right? So you got to always remember that because stuff going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But how I respond. Right. So that's basically, you know, even with the influences in today's culture, even yeah. the influence with rap, right, right. it's about the response. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're hearing it, when you're listening to it, you know, and, 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 you know, try not to have that negative response that is permeating in your head. Right. You know, a lot of times... And, 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 and that's why I'm, I'm so glad that we're having this conversation because a lot of people don't know how to, they don't know how to separate the negative from the positive. They don't know how to compartmentalize, right. put this information here. And right. Even though I just heard this and, you know, I'm influenced this way, but I'm going to still go this way. Right, right, you right. know, I see people at the light and they... You know what I'm saying? Just the music. You know what I'm saying? They be they're about to jump out the car. Wow. And I be saying to myself, wow, man. Wow. That music is so poignant, man. Wow. And, 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 and it has so much influence on us to the point where I, this is how I feel. Mm. And, and, a, and, and, and a lot of the streets is being put on display in the music. That's and uh, we got a lot of killing. A lot of you know, a lot of, lot of, lot of labels going down, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of these, a lot of the streets, a lot of what they doing is being put on display in their raps. Right, right. Do you think it's a good idea to put your reality on display in your raps, and then you know you got the police watching you, you got right. the, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they using everything you said against you, right? Against you, right? I want to say this first before I answer that or before I respond to that. Um, you know how you and I are at this age and we're striving to um, practice that aspect of um, having power over our thoughts and controlling mm -hmm. our thoughts. And I'm in my 40s, mm -hmm. right? You in your 40s, 40s yeah. right? Think about a young person. They don't have that insight, mm -hmm. right? So they they're, they don't have that, uh, but let me think about how should I respond to this lyric? How should I respond? They're not, they, they don't, they probably have the ability, but they don't have the insight. Mm. Man, you just really, you know what I mean? We get right. into the groove of that right. in our 40s. And I mean, I didn't develop the insight till I was like 34, 35. You see what I'm saying? And we both just admitted to how exhausting it could be. Mm. So we know in good and well, man, young people don't have, and see, that's my fight with with a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, the power of music. I'm more into, like, the young people, bro, because they the future, literally. Right. right. That ain't right. just some cliche slang that sound cool. So if we're pouring all this garbage into the future, what the future look like? Mm -hmm. Two plus two is four, man. Right. right, in America, China, Russia, still four. Two plus two is four. You see what I'm saying? And so, anyway, I just I transitioned into um, what you just asked me. Um, and do I think that an individual should be putting that stuff on display? And I mean, see, it started off, NWA started off calling it reality rap. So the thing, though, is like, it's one thing to share my reality. Because Curtis Blowman was sharing a reality, too, bro. Mm -hmm. It was already reality rap, if you want to think of it. If you really want to think of it, they was talking about the hood. They was talking about the plight as being a black man in America. They was talking about the streets, bro, drugs. They was talking about it. But it was different, B. And we knew it was different. You know then and you know now it was different. They weren't talking about, they weren't really promoting it. 
But see, now these guys, what you talking about, that's more of a promote. They ain't really, it ain't really put my reality on display. It's promote my reality. Mm. And so if this is your reality, you promote it, then you're going to get the consequences of your reality. Death or prison. Ain't no more. I mean, you know there's stuff in between. Ending, people stabbing, you bang, hating, I mean, baby here, baby there. I mean, it's STD. I mean, it's all kind of little stuff in between. When we talking about the, the ultimate consequences, death. Or murder. That's gonna get your. That's what you gonna get. And it's just, and it's a, it's a sensitive subject because, like I it said, is. I listen to a lot of gangster rap myself, and I love a lot of the artists, mm -hmm. you know. But I have to deal with the reality of it too. You got love for them as a as, as a, person, a person, bro. But I, th I and think that's about where they come come from. Yeah, and yeah. What they what they doing and like you, you empathize know, with them. right. Yeah. And I know a lot of them. You know, they talk about killing. They talk about drugs. Then they talk about this and they talk about that. Yeah. And then when the death of an artist happened, yeah. we sad. I mean, yeah, and it's cool to be sad because somebody died. Right, you know but, what I'm saying? but what I'm saying but, is But that, I know what you're saying. You know, I just wanted to know, throw that out a there. A lot of times, it's like these rappers, like... They act surprised. They, they, People act surprised. Right, you know, because words, words, like, you can you can attract things yeah, to you. Yeah, death, you speak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, you know. Life and death is in the power of what you say, man. That's what I believe in. Like, I believe in the Bible because I can read the Bible. It'll say something, and then I can see it happen in real life. I learned that from the Bible. Power of, you know what I'm saying? Life and death is in the power. Of the and you see it all the time with that. That's a good example, bro. I, I, I was uh, scrolling YouTube. I was doing some little research on some rap. I was getting some correlations with, you know, with rappers and murders and death and shootings and all this stuff in the last, like, 10 years. And I was getting all kinds of freaking footage. I mean, some of these guys I don't really know because I really haven't been keeping up. You know what I mean with the artists and stuff, but a lot of them was guys who were doing exactly what you said. They were speaking it. They were speaking it, and it was coming back. You know what I'm saying? If right. you if you sell, and here's the thing. Then here's the other thing too. Um, it's about you was talking about the power of our thoughts. It's like this. I understand we could be in a situation that we had no control over. Um, now, if you want to change that situation, you're going to have to change it with the way you think. But you can do it. Mm -hmm. We've seen people do it time and time again. I've done it. You've done it. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? We know people who've done it in major ways when they, you know, have riches attached to it. But it's not always about the money or nothing like that. You know, sometimes people want that change, but they just don't know how to do it. It's not even always about the money, but sometimes it is. I know guys who are selling dope, but they wanted to change, and they changed their way they thought. They end up selling cars and being blessed. My cousin one of them. And now he doing stuff in the community and all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It started with the way he was thinking. It started, it started with the thought first. It started with the thought. You know, everything started with a thought first. And I want everybody to know that, you know what I'm saying? You create everything that's around you from your thoughts. Yeah. Your thoughts are things. Your thoughts are, your thoughts evolve. They do. You they know? do. They do. I wanted to also, because I was watching, I was watching Peasy, I was watching Vezo on Million Dollars Worth of Game. Yeah. And... They was talking about how they know that they're corrupting, they misguiding people with their, they misguiding the generation with their music. Mm -hmm. But they said, you know, it's upon the individual to, you know, actually listen to it, to actually go out there and do some dumb stuff that, that they, they say saying on wax. <laughs> so they like. So what they're saying is that <laughs> we don't do none of this stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We, we we this is just our talent. This is just our art. This entertainment. This is how we get money. You know, this is how we get we our money. But yeah. at the end of the day, we go home to our family. We go home to our Peace kids. Me. So if you want to be a stool pigeon out here, if you want to be a goofball, a fool out here and listen to our lyrics and go shoot them up, bang, bang, do this and that, then that's on you. Now, uh, I want to ask you this. Okay. Do you feel like that's a walking contradiction? Hell yeah, man. And I said it right on, on, on camera. Preacher Corey. Yeah, I did. Hell yeah. So and let me explain why. Because, bro, that's so dark to me. Like, fam. It's like, but I can respect 
a person who actually can say that. Like I, I can respect the, the transparency. Mm. Let me say that. I can respect that. I can. But I have to say absolutely. Absolutely it is, bro. And then and whoever the guy is that you talking about, he gonna keep doing it. And then somebody, a whole bunch of somebody's gonna watch that same interview that you watched and hear this this guy say the same things that you heard him say, and they're gonna walk away from that interview and still listen to his music. They're gonna still promote him. They're gonna still be one of his followers or fans. <laughs> it is crazy because I'm one of them. <laughs> and I and you know what I'm saying, I you know I love as old PZ. I watch him all the time, but it it you know the, the, it's just what you said. Just, though, I mean, I'm just know? saying, like because right. It's a country. It's like, yeah. But again, it, I I don't know. I mean, like, this it doesn't really. I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm trying to be fair here. Yeah. Like with my response. Like now, now afterwards, I got it. Cause the more I'm talking, I'm thinking. Like after the fact, though, I feel like that's a contradiction. Prior to, for sure. After the fact, like, dang, is it really a contradiction now, though? Like after I done heard him say it out his mouth. Now, really, is it a contradiction? I don't really know. I don't know the guy, and I don't hear his words, but I'm I had, I'm responding at the principle initially. But now, the more I talk, I'm like, after this man done told me this, is it really a contradiction for him to walk that out like that? He just told me. I ain't doing this stuff, bro. Y'all go out there and do it, you stupid. I'm getting money. I'm entertaining you. This is my job. There's strippers who are not hoes and sluts. Now, I'm not promoting being a stripper, but this is a reality. Every stripper is not a hoe and a slut, but some of them are, right? So some of them looking at it as, this is my job. They really ain't telling you to go out and be one. This is what they do for a living. They probably got some goals or whatever. We done seen movies with stories, you know, Players Club. We done seen it. Some of us know females in real life that that's what it was. And so it's the same thing for him, just because he rapping. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna slight him because he a gangster rapper. That same principle applies if he's sitting there telling you now. My problem is, it still becomes a contradiction if, you know, I don't even know the guy again. Like, does he understand the, the impact that he has on young people? You know, that would be one question I would ask my man. You know what I mean? And you still don't care? And you still do it? Like, now we, now we moving into another realm of a conversation. But I think he was he talking to grown folks. It sounded like he was talking to grown folks. You know what I mean? So it's like, but I don't respect the principal aspect of of the fact that I understand a word called genocide, and what genocide talks about is really the elimination or termination of a people group. And the crazy thing is, when one people group can be actually the toolage of making that happen. And so when you got an individual, I don't give a care what their attitude or their motive is and all of that stuff. Honestly, at the end of the day, if he's promoting murder to his own people, I'm feeding them murder, we're going to we're gonna get a result of murder. So genocide will really begin to happen. It's been happening. We terminate our own people. You understand? So on one hand, when he like, yeah, I'm telling you out my mouth, don't go do it, you stupid, if you do it. Yeah, but bro, on another hand, the power in what you're doing just is what it is. And it's going to have an outcome and bear fruit that it's going to bear. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, our people as a whole being impacted. So I can't respect that. I can't respect you getting rich to do that. Just like I can't respect another man. We'll talk about a white man that'll use us and do different things like that and kill us off to get rich off of us. But we won't say that to ourselves. No, bro, that's fake. That's an uncle time for real. Especially when you knowing like like <laughs> it's layers to it. Like especially when you knowing good and dang on well, who really running all this stuff? Now he sound like a uh, artist, artist. Is he an artist, artist? He got a record deal with somebody. Huh? So you already knowing you a, you you knowing you a puppet. You do know there's not one guy with a deal that don't know they a puppet. So you the uncle time, b. But to each his own, to each his own. But I'm going to say what I got to say, my truth, my truth. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying it, I ain't just saying it because I'm some religious dude. I'm some zealous dude. I'm saying it because the people that I'm speaking for, I've served for 17 years. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it because the people I'm speaking for, I am the people. Mm -hmm. I've been impacted by the, by, the, by the music, by the environment. The music didn't cause the environment, but the music, it like perpetuated it on the inside of me. 
You know what I'm saying? So I went from drinking as an elementary kid. I went from slutting and being a little a little elementary boy, a little little perverted little thing. Sex, sex, sex. Mm -hmm. I went from all that carrying guns and being involved in drugs and selling drugs and snort coke and all this different stuff. Before 18, I'm, I done did all this. Mm -hmm. Three, three, four drug habits by 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Now you can say that's just because of the environment all you want to, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. I was into the music. I was so much into the music that I had one artist I used to listen to. He used to talk about the devil so much. I loved the devil and hated God. <laughs> what was that, Eshaw? E. <laughs> and some people, they right, weren't yeah. like that. A lot of people liked the Eshaw. But, but, but I was into him like that. Yeah. Some people wasn't. Yeah, he did. He you did. know what I'm saying? He had, yeah. He had a lot of people liking the devil. He yeah. The influence. Yeah. And some people messed with him and they didn't They didn't do the stuff I did. Mm -hmm. And I know some people took it a step further than me. I couldn't burn no Bible. Mm -hmm. But I got a cousin who did. Mm -hmm. So the influence was different, with it, but it still impacted. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, it seemed like just as a culture, man. I kind of bounced like a little bit, a, but you follow me. We, we seem like we just slide down a, down a, down a double edge sword. You know, because you got a community of people trying to get out. Everybody want a way to get out. Everybody using the rap. as The rap is a way to get out. But at the disposal of what? At the disposal of what? And am I really out? Mm -hmm. out of, and out of what? Poverty? Because if, again, I'm going to reiterate something I shared last time. If Ruby Payne's theory is actually a true one, which I, I personally believe it is, the assertion that people in poverty develop personality traits that perpetuate poverty, if that's true, then if I'm a rapper that's coming out of poverty, um, preaching and teaching, because it's really what preach means to proclaim. Mm -hmm. You don't got to be on a pulpit. You don't got to be religious, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I'm pro proclaiming uh, murder, death, uh, drug dealing, uh, misogynism, uh, I mean, ain't no fatherhood nowhere. I mean, this is all kind of stuff missing. Like it's so if I'm if I'm doing all of this and I'm really I get a mansion, right? I get a mansion. I got cars, all of that, but cats around me is niggas from the hood but I still can't trust no nigga or no female I can't get married cause I don't trust nobody I ran through I don't know how many females I don't know how many kids you got or if you don't got a kid you understand what I'm saying but I still got ties to the dope game a little bit on the low cause I'm greedy and I got a front now and I'm still messing with a little, little, little bit. So is you really out is the question. You still in a predicament. You still got illegal guns. You ain't even smart enough. Get it. I carry a gun, but it's legal now. I had a felony before for like 15 years. Got it expunged. Now I carry a legal gun. But a cat like that, no. Illegal guns, all kind of stuff still. So are you really out? You not out for real. I got to make it out the hood. No, the hood is in you. That part of the hood, because all of the hood ain't bad. And that's what we're trying to lift up at the Hoodie Awards this year, December 30th, 2022. Make sure you be there. All right. The hood ain't uh, SBRC Marketplace in the ballroom, 6 o'clock. Y'all keep stay tuned on social media. We're going to keep giving you all the information, all right? But, you know, and that's one of the things. Everything in the hood ain't bad. But that aspect, you know, what they're talking about making it out of is the bad stuff. You know what I mean? But are you really out, though? That's my question, bro. Why you think, okay, prime example, bro. We can, we can, we can put a list of rappers up right now that fit everything I just said. It happened to T.I. at one point. It happened to, what's the, what's the new dude? With the, the one, uh, was he Amigo? He went to, was he in the feds stuff? What's one of the dude? I know the one got killed, but not the other. Wasn't it another one that oh, got caught oh, up in some feds stuff? I think so. The one got caught up in some feds yeah, stuff. So, yeah. See what I'm saying? My baby got money now, don't he? Mm -hmm. But he grew up in the hood, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I thought he was out. So, so just, at the end of the day, it's the mindset. It, 
What is that's that's an aspect. That's what it's the most powerful to. aspect. Because that's order, the most powerful order, aspect of it. In order, okay, in order to get the hood up out you, you gotta change your hood, man. Your mind, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like they, these guys get mansions out in, in in civilized neighborhoods. They playing. I know. They on some straight hood stuff. Mm -hmm. Niggas pulling up, lit, smoking killer. Blasting their music and he's quiet, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Neighborhoods, they all civilized and everything. Right. Y'all coming in there, you know, females galore, <laughs> probably, you know, and they uncivilized because they right. calling themselves bitches. Right. Come right. on, bitch. Right. They sat chasing. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. No, nah, man, keep going. <laughs> You know, we keep it real on this show. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Man, we deal with real saying, issues, real topics. Man. I love my people. Bro. You know, because at the end of the day, we trying to bridge the gap on this, this being influenced by yeah. the, the rap culture yeah. as in a way where it can keep us alive instead of decimating us. Right, instead of working against us. Yeah. So use know. it for some positive and still get money off it. You don't have that's the thing, bro. Here's my thing, family. I get that individuals like, well, this is what they want, and this is my career. I'm trying to I'm trying to please the people that this is what they want. Okay. If everybody had that mindset, cool. So what could I do? What could we do with that mindset? Switch it. Realize this that the people will only want what you put out. Everybody could change the whole game if they wanted to right now and still get the same money on. Probably not the same exact money because maybe some distribution deals and all that different stuff. But you can still create. I mean, it's 2022, about to be 2023, man. There's ways to make money using music and all distribution and all that, man. Y'all can change the game, man, and still make money off of music. Just stop talking about killing each other. Stop talking about selling coke is, is the thing. And heroin and, and drug like just to be rich and to make it to be something and quit making everybody think they need all these cars and the the house got to be this big and you got to have <laughs> this many girls like all that stuff ain't reality b mm -hmm. so stop doing that talk about something else nigga mm -hmm. for real like you what can talk about to something else storytelling yeah what talk, you can still talk about the hood and mm -hmm. drugs but what about drugs how they impact you negatively or how 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 you were selling them and they got you sent up state and you stopped or not acting like it's all good no fam mm -hmm. we could we could literally do that man y'all got skills bro do you some think, of the catchers real do talented you, man. man do you think they I mean do you think that certain artists range is limited as to where they they this all they know they saw I mean you you gonna only rap about what you but know you, absolutely fam. But, I know with talent, with skill, with art, you have to try to take it to another level. With like life. Say, with life, right. You got to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yes, man. You got to be comfortable with doing things yes. outside of yourself. Yes. Stepping out of out of your old self into new shoes yeah. for a moment. To, yeah. to see where that, um, where that mental capacity can take you to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was watching DJ Cassidy. You ever heard it to him? DJ Cassidy oh, passed the mic. He passed the mic around to the whole world. Uh uh. Great show. Okay. It's DJ Cassidy, and every time I go home, I go straight to YouTube and I put it on DJ Cassidy. He have Patty LaBelle, Gladys Knight, Karen White. He passing the mic to Johnny Gill, and it, it started. I guess started in the COVID. Okay. And he, you know, he passing love from his home. To your home, to all these other different yeah. artists' home, and he's passing the mic around the world. The influence that that show have mm -hmm. is so much of a festive elation. Is so much of a of a of just a a, a, a happy feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. man, going back, man, he even got Blondie on there. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying, man? Yeah. And, and, you know, and he's taking us back to the ones that, the originality of it. Yeah. The, the, the the originals who made these songs. And he's mm -hmm. bringing them back and George Clinton and all these people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 
I just, man, I just have so much of a festive time when I'm watching it. It, yeah. it, it helped me to think positive. It helped me to think, um, help me to full, keep forward thinking. Yeah. Like when I do, I listen to gangster rap. I can only listen to about an hour, two hours, things of that, things of that nature because right. of the mindset that it puts you in. Right, right. You know, it just how you thinking for the moment. And I like things that's going to make me think for down the line. Right. I don't, I don't want to see just not past it, you know, just right, right for the right. Now, I want to see down the line. I want right. to be able to elevate my perspective. Right. You right. know. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that, 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 you know, them old tunes of, 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 of Gladys Knight, Karen mm -hmm. White, and Johnny Gill, and, and, and M. Toomey, mm -hmm. and all this and that, you know, I think about where it started at, mm -hmm. you know, and these gangster rappers, and they, they, they got on these tracks, and <laughs> took it to a different level. Yeah. You know, it went from happy, festive to straight gangster. Right. All in the same right. song, you know what I'm right. saying? And a lot of people don't even know about those songs and the originality of the songs or who made them because a lot of these songs that's being remade today, they thinking a lot of artists that made them. Right. But they just all remakes. Right. But you gotta have that music in your life, man. That 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 keeps you happy, that keeps right. you festive, that keeps you growing mentally. Right. You know, you can't listen to one genre of music and allow that that one genre of music to dictate your actions. You know what I'm saying? And to and to influence you. Yeah. You know, especially Absolutely. when it's negative. Especially when it's negative, bro. And just to kind of. So, because you, you kind of triggered a couple of thoughts. Mm -hmm. The first one is the impact, the aspect of the impact of the positive music. And so you just shared the reality of the other spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I talk about this subject matter a lot of times, and that's why this book is the way it is, it's not really talking about, I mean, I mentioned gangster rap in here, um, but the, the, the bulk of the book is talking about the power of music. And it, it's explaining the science behind the psychology behind it, you know what I mean? And so there's a diff there's a whole spectrum. It's not just negative. I was negative. saying that because at the back you I was saying I mean? how you was explaining about behavior and yeah. things of that nature. Yeah. yeah. A lot of substance in that book. It's a whole lot of substance in it. Yeah, there. a lot of substance. I was just looking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share something. But what I was what I was for one second. What I was gonna say was uh um, music matter. Just the uh the positive piece. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. where I was where I was headed, you know. And you talked about how that impacts you. You know, and that was, that's positive. And you talked about how uh, DJ, what's his name? Cassidy. DJ Cassidy and what he do and like how he's sharing like joy. He's sharing happiness. He's sharing memories and different things by using mm -hmm. music to do this and going into all of our homes throughout the internet. And when he started it, it was during COVID. He understood, he understands and understood at that time the power of music. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, DJ anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Duh. But he understands the power of music. And he was trying to, you know, during that time, there was a lot of people doing cool things. You know what I mean? That was trying to, it was a humanity thing. People didn't know what the heck was going on in the world, right? So that was cool that he used that. And that's just an example. That it's not that music is evil itself. It's just like, how are we using it? You know what I mean? Like, like, like how are we using this music? We can use it to be, um, either be greedy and think about ourselves and get rich. We can use it to help, empower, you know, we can use it to uplift people, inspire, motivate, or we can use it to hurt or harm. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't just rap. You got rock and roll too. I got stuff in there about rock. It ain't just rap. It ain't just black, black people, man. I'm talking about does the music, did I say does the rap music matter? Is that the does name of the book? Music does the music matter? I talk a lot about the rap music because, I mean, it is what it is. Race is relevant. I'm a black man. Mm -hmm. I grew up a black man. I've been serving in a black community. Mm -hmm. My family black. Nephews, nieces, mm -hmm. cousins, family, friends, friends, neighbors. Mm -hmm. Right? So I care. So the rap is what's impacting my people. Mm -hmm. So that's why I talk about that more. But so I just wanted to share that part though. That mm -hmm. was a good part that you brought about the positive piece because I believe once we just start to understand the power, that's just go. Understanding the power of music just central. Now, as the movement, 
Then I'm, I'm getting into the nuts and bolts mm -hmm. of the Music Matter 13. But the book, the literary work, is not really focusing so much as, don't listen to this, don't listen to that. It's focusing on helping you understand this is this, this thing called music. Power. Mm -hmm. Way more powerful. And you need to respect it. Mm -hmm. we, we disrespect the power of music a lot. Why do you think people in religions use music and seances to summon spirits? Real demons. Mm -hmm. They use music to, 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 to do use rituals and like why do you think music is you so many you and we disrespect that power. Mm -hmm. we, we we give it to a people group and not really we. Let me correct myself. Another people group, mm -hmm. okay, gave it to our people group. We already know. There's not a Negro in sight that own anything in the music industry, for real, that run it. So you, you, you have one people group give it to them. Uh, it's like almost giving you poison. Mm -hmm. I'm spreading this around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm spreading this. Put a little of this over it, a little bit over there. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can look at statistics and tell from the time when, when that music, when it shifted to gangster rap. When Crazy Bone had it on this show, uh, shout out to Crazy, man. When Crazy had it on his show, that letter that was written talking about the uh, the, the uh, gangster rap music, mm -hmm. how they was inserting everything and all this agenda and all that. You look at the research from that that was dated to like I think the late eighties, the real mm -hmm. early nineties. If you look from that time to now and look at statistics, I guarantee you the stuff that's been in the music has manifested amongst our people more than anybody. That's why we got Doug News Matter 13 dealing with mass incarceration. Man, we just, man, as black people, we just ain't got dealt a bad hand, man. You know, I was looking What do you at, do with spades? I'm sorry to cut you off. You all right? You trick or something. That was good. Yeah. Because we have, right? Right. What do you do? Black people that's listening. Black people, white people, anybody. But I'm really talking to black people because, I mean, a lot of times we, that's what we say. We got dealt a bad hand. I know this ain't no car game, but just hear that analogy. Mm -hmm. What do you do in spades, my guy? If you're a spade player like me, because I, I ain't going to punk out. Right. You do, you'll try to make a couple books. What? Partner, right? What? You, know? you get a bad head? Yeah. You, not yeah. Finna, yeah. you ain't going to let nobody you try know. try to make a queen walk, Come a on, jack bro. walk or something. Come bro. on, bro. And you not going to let the opponents know you got a weak hand, fam. You gonna joke a little bit. You gonna talk trash, depending right. on your personality right. trait. Right. Me, I'm gonna talk more trash than when I ain't got a good hand. Mm -hmm. So, I got dealt a bad hand. Cool, I see it. Now let me work it. Mm -hmm. If I get dealt a bad hand, fam, and I'm just throwing cards out, don't just willy nip. I'm gonna renege. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna miss out on books, blessings. I'm gonna. My consequence gonna be an L. Mm -hmm. Guarantee an L. At least let me try. Exactly. I, how can I win? Watch this. I got dealt a bad hand. But the people dealing me the hand creating circumstances. I think that, and here goes circumstances. Uh, drugs, poverty, okay, these kind of situations, right? Uh, violence, guns, right? Creating the circumstance. So how I'm gonna actually submit to the circumstance and get out of it? The trap. We think the trap is cool. Niggas done start rapping about the trap and we done embraced it. Trap. <laughs> trap. Trap. Right. Trap, bro. Right. Trap. It's a trap. A trap. It's a trap. And now it's cool now. You cool with being trapped? You gonna promote trapping? And you trap. Man, you an Uncle Tom, nigga, for a couple <laughs> dollars. And you still trap. Say what you want. So do you think it's more... I get a little passionate sometimes. I, hey, ain't nothing wrong with it. So do you think... Um, I want to word this right. It be people, funny, people sacrificing they self mm -hmm. for money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, not... Uh, well, how can I put it? By all means, you know what I'm saying? They, they, I mean, because it's just like, you know, they doing 
no morals, no 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 thought, no reason behind it. You know what I'm saying? No um, thinking about how it's going to affect the, the community, the kids, the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, all I'm all I'm all I'm thinking about is my check. Mm -hmm. So so is that what it just boiled down to, man? Is that man? Everybody is going against the grain. Everybody stepping on everybody. We don't give a fuck about the culture. All I care about is a check. Yeah, I that's mean, what it boiled down to. I mean, it's I I I believe it's it's kind of been like that in different ways. It's just mm -hmm. looked different with that because of the type of industry it is. You know what I mean? Like, let's be real. Don't nobody go to work at Walmart and think they're building a family for real. And <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it is about the check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The problem is these individuals are not connecting their life to a purpose. You see what I mean? If I connect my life to a purpose, fam, I'm thinking about even after I die. Like, what I'm doing now, like, like what's going to be going on after I die? What kind of purpose did I fulfill? You're not thinking like that if all you think about is getting rich or die trying. And no way, by any means necessary. Right. You're not thinking about the legacy part of it. Yeah, what kind of legacy? You don't leave one, but what kind? Everybody leave it. You know what I'm saying? What kind of like, so they're not connected to some sense of identity with purpose. They don't have a purpose in mind, so they don't care about the perpetuation. They don't care about being a tool of perpetuation of that. You know what I mean? They ain't even thinking about their kids and their grandkids. You really think, bro, that you got that much money and influence and power that you're going to put all this stuff out, right? You're not going to let your kids listen to it right now. You think your kids can't get exposed to it some other way? You sowing it, you reap what you sow, fam, like for real. Cats to tell you, man, it's cats that lost their seeds, bro. Been in the streets, got out the streets, or maybe dealing down the steady trying to get out the streets, but done lost their kids to the streets. They'll tell you they reaping what you sow show up like that. But y'all thinking it's everything gonna be willy-nilly because you got money, it don't work like that. You think you're gonna keep your kids covered while trying to help everybody else's kids stay uncovered. Man, go on, get up out of here with that, fam. I don't respect that, bro. I don't respect that. Cats can call me what they want. You know what I'm saying? Like, a person that has to know me got to understand how I live. And I live. I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna go there right now. They ain't ready for Do you me. think that, that a lot of rappers, right, yeah, that like with it. the trap music, yeah. During the gangster movies, do you think a lot of rappers, because once 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 a purpose is infused with they rap, right? That's what make them different because right. the different rappers got different purposes. It's some, it's some out there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, some, it's a lot of them out there. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of them out there. Oh yeah. So yeah. more of them need a purpose. So they can intertwine that purpose, infuse that purpose in their art. And that's what makes you unique. Instead of, okay, rapping about drugs, the perks, the guns, this and that. Okay, now my purpose is to what? help, to help to what? bring people together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right, to, right. To, to help build the legacy. Right. You know, right. so now when I understand and I develop a purpose, now I can put these into my raps. Right. Right. But if I've only been in the hood, in the ghetto, and I ain't never been exposed to nothing else but that, that's what you're that's gonna all come out. Yeah, and I get that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and a lot of times, uh, can we expect them to know anything else? If uh, they ain't been nowhere else? No, but I, I mean, I, I'm not really, you know, me personally, I'm not really too much big on trying to tell people what they need to do per se. Mm -hmm. I'm controlling no grown. I'm gonna share principles, perspective, theory. I'm gonna I'm share experience. I'm gonna share my desire. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um, I'm not gonna say what I need to expect them, how I expect them to do, or what mm -hmm. I expect them, you know, not to do, or nothing like that. But I can say this. I can say this. Um, if that's all an individual knows, if they want something different, they're gonna have to go seek knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's your responsibility. Ain't nobody else's responsibility to teach you something else, fam. So all that bull about this all I know wasn't, do you like the outcome? You might like the outcome. If that's what you like, fine. Death, prison, commissary, 
being around hard days or I, mean, I don't know, bro. Like you might like stuff that you keep experiencing, but some of us be like, man, I don't like these consequences. I don't like these consequences. I don't like this addiction no more. I don't like this no more. I don't like waking up empty every day. I don't like waking up without a direction, no guidance, no purpose. I don't like this no more. So what we do, we go find knowledge. We seek information. We seek, do you understand? I mean, and, so, and, and, so, and not to cut you off, well, I was just cool. talking about, I was just talking to an individual yesterday. Yeah. When I first started reading books, yeah. and in Robert Greene Mastery, it says that you should assimilate as much as information as you can. Mm -hmm. Not knowing where this information is gonna lead you to, mm -hmm. but it's your job to get it. To get it. You know, it, it is sometimes a lot of people, well, what am I reading this information for? What this information gonna do with me? Right. Well, what is this information gonna do for me? Growth. Right. It's gonna educate you, it's gonna edify you. Right. It ain't gonna hurt you. That's you know, what it ain't gonna you know and, and, and it's gonna <laughs> stick with you down the line. Yeah. You know, like what he's saying, these principles, these the the morale that he's talking about, those 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 um, the things that keep you to keep you uh, 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 balanced in life. Yeah. You know, books always kept me balanced. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying yeah. just being able to go in there and, and, and read, man, and, and getting information. I never knew where the information was gonna take me to. I right. never knew that I'd be sitting here. Uh, years later on the podcast. Right. You right. know, so with all the insight that you had exactly but throughout the years, read, experience it prepared me all for that. this. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Not Absolutely. knowing where I was going. Absolutely. That's a good illustration. You know, so Absolutely. so so we must we have to read. We have to edify right. ourselves. We we do. We do, man. And I do understand that there's a reality that sometimes some people don't even know how to do that. I get it. That's a reality. A reality is some people don't really know how to get educated. Mm -hmm. Even a student that go to school every day, they go to school out of this is my job. Because mama said if I don't go to school, her, her case going to get cut off. I so a lot of people too, little kids. Well, what, what, do you know why you're going to school? A lot of times they don't understand. I'm, they being, don't I'm going to know. be educated. That's, that, you know. So I'm not going to act like why that's not go, a reality. They say, I, why you going to school? They, yeah, yeah, that, that's that, wow. That's a reality. Yeah. And here's the thing, though: it's like we excuses is like opinions. Everybody got one, yeah. right? So it's like, man, and that's where, like, taking the village or like being my brother's keeper or just you doing good, what's good with your life. Like, like it's not really. I just don't believe in seeing something that's difficult, bro, and saying, "Well, f it." I just don't believe it. I'm always trying to figure out a way around effort, bro. You see what I mean? So I get there's circumstances and situations and conditions in life sometimes that, bro, people be really jacked up, fam. They don't know how to get the insight. They don't know how to get... I know kids. I know young people. I work with young people. You come to school. Mama on dope. We really get evicted. You know what I'm saying? I got the same clothes on from yesterday. You understand what I'm saying? I've been out with my niggas. I've been selling a little dope, Mr. Christian, but I'm in here from school. Mama said if I don't come to school, the lights, the, the case gonna get cut off. There's a lot of things that be going on in the lives of some young people that the stuff that I'm saying really don't make sense to them right now. You understand? So it's like, man, I, I'm aware of all that and I still don't give up. I still don't say, well, that's that's the end. Ain't nothing to end for us, bro. Ain't nothing. It's too many of us that done did too, we done overcame too much, fam. That came out the same gutter around the same stuff. So so there's an answer to every question. These questions, you, and I don't got them all. I am not the expert. I'm the experienced, not the expert. I don't got all the answers, but I know it can happen. We see too many black people in America that came out the hood that's doing good. Not everybody rich and wealthy. Like wealthy, wealthy, like rich. But we seen too many. You know how many people done moved even away from here? And they're, they're thriving in life, and they can go anywhere and survive because they grew up in Saginaw, Michigan, bro. They got good jobs. They got families. They got peace in their life. You understand what I'm saying? They're giving back even in communities that they're working in. My homeboy Prince one of them. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy Prince. You know what I mean? Like, it's people. People can do it, bro. And Prince Robertson, just so y'all know his last name. P.F. The homie P.F. But people can do it, bro. We, we see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And not only that, that 
see it all in the life, time. we gotta be, we gotta learn to be, we gotta learn to problem solve more. You know, yeah. that's the that's the, our that's the whole our whole primary agenda in life is that we have to be problem solvers. We can't run away from problems. Absolutely. You know, we have when, when there's good, a problem yeah. in that's our good. in front of us, we have to be able to attack it, that's good. and we have to be able to solve it in some type of way. If we keep running for problems, we keep running from adversity. Yeah, bro. So we never develop the endurance to overcome anything. Yeah, bro. That's like running a circle. It's like, cause problems they, they, it's like you try to you try to solve a problem and create another one. So it's like, I'm hungry. Well, I gotta sell this dough. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to hear that a lot when I was coming up. I gotta eat, nigga. I gotta eat. My kids gotta eat. So the problem is, I gotta eat, right? So my 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 approach to that problem is selling dope. Which gonna create another problem. Cause what's gonna happen? Who gonna feed the kids when you get caught selling the dope and now you ain't here to sell the dope to bring in the money to feed the kids? They still hungry. So what you saying, bro, it's so it, it's, it applies to us in so many ways mm -hmm. with a lot of the excuses that we have, bro. Mm -hmm. What you just said, bro, that's revelation. That's revelation. Listen, all of the Negro people out there, and really, I mean, and not just Negro people. I mean, we've been talking about our people a lot because the context of the conversation, not really the context of our hearts. You understand what I'm saying? But anybody in poverty out there, Black, white, green, for real. If you in poverty, know what my man y'all just said is revelation. The way out of it is problem solving. That's revel. We can shut the camera down, right? We can shut it all down right now. We need an offering. If we just ain't got nobody here. I'm about to get my man. I'm about to cash out my man. And y'all need to cash out my man for that revelation. That's what they be doing in church. There's a little sense of humor. But yeah, seriously, nah. though, that's revelation, bro. Yeah. That's revelation, and man. I, and, and, I'm going to marry you. don't understand. That just blessed me, bro. Thank you. That and, just blessed me. And, man, you know, we that got it just, together. That's that right. just blessed you know, me. Straight, straight up. Straight <laughs> yeah. up. Because I'm going to yeah. be driving home meditating on that, bro. Mm -hmm. Corey, what problems you got right now? Mm -hmm. And you, you have to have them from the running? smallest to the biggest. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You, know, you, deal with, you deal with the smallest problem to the biggest, you know? Yeah. You know, because it take a little more thought process to see how you gonna handle and how you gonna solve those big problems. Absolutely. Absolutely you know, man. man, we like to thank those the Music Matter 13, Corey Pritchett coming back, man, and blessing us with some more game, man, no and doubt. some more wisdom, man. No and doubt. Bringing this book, you know, does the Music Matter. You know, we, we, yeah. we got a custom. I'm gonna read something for them. Yes, let's go. We gonna make we gonna make this our custom when we come on here. Mm -hmm. All right, we gonna read. We gonna try to read some a little deep yeah. so I can explain it just yeah. real quick, right? Let me and see. all these are teachable moments, you all know what I'm saying? Teachable. And, and you teachable. know, this is what this podcast is about, is man. This yeah. is about teaching, man. At the end of the day, we have to all be autodidactic, and what that means is to be self-taught. You know what he was just saying is that you, a lot of us don't want to go to college, a lot of us don't like school, you know. But we have to teach ourselves certain Absolutely. things that help us evolve and help us to be able to move forward. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it fast. Not like real fast, but that means I'm just saying I ain't going to read it slow. So y'all just rewind it if you need to or whatever, okay? This is from uh, section three, the mind, memory, thought life, the brain. So this whole section deals with that in different uh, layers. Memory is commonly measured by one of two principal ways, by amount retained and by relearning. Music has been identified as important in the construction of autobiographical memories and thus for making judgments about oneself and others. Autobiographical information associated with musical melodies are evoked when we hear relevant music or when we are engaged in conversation about music or episodes and events in our life in which music has been important, just like when you was at your wedding. Or when you was at that certain birthday party mm -hmm. and that certain song came on. You understand what I'm saying? And so hearing music associated with our past often evokes a strong feeling of knowing. You see what I mean? We have this feeling for many songs without knowing the title or text of the songs. Mm -hmm. The oldie but goodies, right? I just shared that in the book. I personally know this to be true. I said this earlier mm -hmm. in the interview. 
I said this in the book. I personally know this to be true as I reflect on many of the oldie but goodies that my mother and I danced to during my youth. My mama would dance with me. Come on, Corey. <laughs> you know, and be at the little gatherings at the parties, you know, family gatherings and stuff. But some of those songs I still don't know the title of even now. Well, well, how how it was the, it's the autobiographical information associated with with the music. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like I don't know, but I know the song. But you don't know who sang it. I don't you know who sang it. It don't even matter. You know that too. It means though. something to me. Right. It's the autobiography. It means something to me and my mama used to dance to this. Mm -hmm. You, every time you hear that, your mind goes right back. Yes, to brother, my mama mind. is gone. She passed away. So right now, even when I hear certain songs, it they correlate true. me back to my mom because of this right here. Mm -hmm. This is the deep book, but it's I try to make it practical too. Mm -hmm. It's scientific. It's psychological. But there's practicalities to this book. And that's why even though I didn't write this for an everyday read, I wrote this for an intention. That's why though I'm going to be doing things with the book, like sharing on podcasts and doing different trainings, just doing different things to kind of break it down mm -hmm. for the average everyday individual. Mm -hmm. Now that we have the foundation, that this is the foundation, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I won't I won't uh I won't keep reading too much uh on that little part. But I will like to say this, uh I would like to read arousal real quick because mm -hmm. I talked about some terms, arousal, short-term memory, associative memory, elaborative rehearsal, positive transfer, perceptual memory. I talk about all that in this section, mm -hmm. but I'm going to just talk about arousal real quick. Mm -hmm. Arousal is a state in which bodily resources are mobilized, including the peripheral nervous system, the endocrine system, the immune system, a sense of alertness, mobility, and readiness to respond. That's arousal, right? Arousal has been shown to affect what aspects of stimulus information we remember. Mm -hmm. Researchers have investigated how experiencing an emotionally arousing event, such as watching a comedy skit, a video of oral surgery, or a stress introduction, immersing someone's hand in ice water, may affect what is just uh, for what may affect memory, excuse me, for what has just been uh, beforehand. I, I ain't read that right, so that messed it up. But I tie all of these in, and once I talk about arousal and short-term memory and all that, I connect that to music. Mm -hmm. This aspect, understanding arousal, arousal has something to do on a response. Mm -hmm. You got it? I read that part. It's something about mobilization, mm -hmm. mobilizing, mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of music, it don't matter what it is, has arousal properties, mm -hmm. right? This is why, uh, uh, what you call them, advertisers, marketers, right? They spend billions, commercial mm -hmm. they spend billions a year mm -hmm. on these things, right? And there's always a jingle in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's a jingle in there, yeah. some music, some jingle, because of the arousal property. It's mm -hmm. to get you to do something. Mm -hmm. So you take that same concept with something like a gangster rap. Talking about, I mean, Killing, murder, get money, get money, get money, dope music, trap music. It's the same. It's arousal properties. Mm -hmm. It's going to trigger some doing, especially when you're in a situation like what we were talking about. This is all I know around me. Then I hear it on the, oh, this is how I get out. Oh, this is what I do. I seen him doing that too. I ain't know if I should do that. I knew I should, but I mean, mm -hmm. so. I just wanted to kind of break that down why yeah. you know, the arousal piece. So, Man, very deep. It's a lot very of layers profound, to it. You know, it's a lot of layers to you it. You know, and understanding the power you possess inside your brain to resist against negative influences that's detrimental to you is 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 so powerful. It is. It is. It's so powerful, man. You have to understand this. This is your greatest asset right here. You and this have to have a relationship more than any other relationship in your Absolutely. life. You got to have a relationship to this. You got to nurture it. You got to build it up. You got to. This is your garden. Come on, bro. You know, you got, you know, and if you don't tend to it, what happens? You got a lot of dandelions, a lot of weed seeds, on, a lot bro. of grass, a lot Come of trees, on, and bro. a lot of leaves that <laughs> you, you, you haven't cleaned up. Oh, bro. Because you done left your garden unnurtured. unnurtured. 
unattended. Let not, anything. Not happen. reading. Snakes not, in the not. garden. Everything. Pesticide. Poisons in the garden. Poisons in the garden. Everything. So, Bro, today, a... we wanted to just be the lime more. We wanted to be the hope that Bro, preach come God, down God. and, 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 and yeah. really help nurture your garden. Straight up. You know, that's what this Straight podcast up. is all about, man. It's that's just right. being yeah. able to nurture the garden of your mind that helps you to think different. Now, helps you to think on a different level. Now, I'm going to add this to it. So don't take what he's saying and then think that, okay, now I know what to do to nurture my garden. I need to take care of my mind. But that don't keep putting stuff in it, though, either. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm, I'm cleaning up my mind. I'm trying to get, okay, I'm trying to get the poison out. I'm trying to guard it. You got to guard. You don't want stuff to come in just because you know what to do now. Mm -hmm. You don't want to keep polluting it because mm -hmm. that's what folk do. Right. You get insight, wisdom, understanding, mm -hmm. knowledge. But right on, right on, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we start working that thing. But then we ain't realizing, oh, we still putting stuff in there. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. And then, and what it's doing is 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 combating it the is. healthiness that we trying to, the nurturing that we putting in it there. It is, man. Mm -hmm. it so is. be careful what you deposit into your into your mind. That's right. The yeah. garden, the way you guard your mind. It's what you say out your mouth and what you see with your eyes and what you listen to. Mm. That's how you guard your mind. That's how you deal with your mind. Okay? Like, if you want if you want to clean it and clean it and be intentional and clean your mind, start being cautious about what you watch, mm -hmm. about what you say, and about what you hear. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And, and start just dealing with things that's, 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 that's tailored to your purpose. You know, that's how you clean your mind as well. You know, start doing things with your mind that's tailored to your purpose and your personality and whoever you are. Right. So you can have a sense of direction on where you're trying to go. Right. You know, you cleaning and you nurturing the garden of your mind to one day be able to fulfill your purpose. Right. So I'm, you're not doing it for nothing. Right. Absolutely. And if you don't even know what that is right now, just start with the normal aspect of your purpose. If you, excuse me, if you're a male, you're somebody's son, be a good son. Mm -hmm. And you have a child, be a good father. That's your purpose, right? If you're a husband, be a good husband. That's your purpose, right? If you're a teenager, you're a young person, you ain't reached all that, you know, but just like I said, somebody's son, somebody's sibling, somebody's brother, somebody's friend. Your purpose is to be a good one. You see what I mean? Be a successful one. Be a good friend. One who forgives. Someone who gives grace. Someone who's willing to lend. Someone who's willing to sacrifice for that other person. Be there for that other person. That's your purpose as a friend, as a brother. You got a purpose right now, but there's deeper and there's layers to purpose and we get it. I just want to throw that out there because somebody out there was going to say, you know what? Yeah, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, guess what? There you go. Mm -hmm. Start there. Because sometimes we want to get too deep. Right, right, right. And right. we have to start somewhere. Right. It'd be too abstract. I yeah, we, we have to start somewhere mm -hmm. with a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, because we want to, what I'm, what I'm going to be and what I'm a good person right now. <laughs> yeah. Someone who forgives, yeah. helps, yeah. gives back. And see what that leads to right now. See what that leads mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Man, bro, I have not been in a, some people think I've just been unstable as a professional, but listen, I've been, I've been just moving, doc. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't looking for a sense of purpose in a job. Mm -hmm. I'm just moving around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just what feels organic mm -hmm. and being a good guy along the way. Right. Being solid. Yeah. If you don't like me, you're a hater because I ain't do nothing to you. Right. I know I'm good people. Mm -hmm. I know I'm authentic in what I do and mm -hmm. what I've ever done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I just weave, weave, just be myself. Be a good person, man. Try to keep my word. You know, if I offend somebody, apologize. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Keep it a buck. Mm -hmm. Start there. Start there. I'm trying to be a good dad the whole time and be a good husband the whole time. We missed the market in different areas, mm -hmm. bro. But just got to start somewhere. Yeah. Got to start somewhere, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Every journey begins with one step. Absolutely. So, you know. So don't walk a, backwards. Don't yeah. be moonwalking. Right. It's up to you to take that one step. <laughs> you know. don't Definitely be don't be moonwalking. Because <laughs> you ain't doing nothing but hurt yourself worse. <laughs>
So listen, we want to thank Corey Preacher for coming in, man, and blessing us with another show, man, and just bringing the positivity, just good energy, man, just good invigoration. Um, We'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. And once again, this is another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles where we are better together than separated. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace.